Hi guys, it's Stacy with Handmade by Stacy J. Today I'm going to show you how to do the Quail Cable Ear Warmer. Now this is a beautiful ear warmer. It's pretty easy to do. It uses very little yarn. And for this one, I use the King Cole Luxury Merino. So it's super warm, super nice. Now the headband itself has an I-cord edging with the cable work. Now the, the twist up here, I do sew a little bit differently. So I'll show you in the video how I do it. And it gives it a little bit more of a, almost a little bit more of a pucker, but when it lays flat, it looks more like a bow, but it doesn't really pucker up much here in the front. So, I mean, you can sew it any way you want, but I'm gonna show you how I sew it my way. And uh, here, I'll take this off so you can see it a little bit better. So just look at the detail of this cabling. Like, isn't that pretty? So I'm going to show you how to do this. And this is a free pattern. You can go on my blog at www.handmadebystacyj.com. Before we get started, please remember to like and subscribe. Let's get started. So let's go over the materials we're going to need for the headband. Now I am using the King Cole Luxury Merino DK Weight Yarn. And it's in the shade Pewter. It's a lovely, lovely gray, and it's super squishy. It's going to be great for a headband. It is 100% Merino Superwash, and this is a 50 gram ball that holds approximately 153 yards or 140 meters. And we're also going to need some US size six or four millimeter knitting needles, some scissors, a cable needle, a tapestry needle, and your tape measure. Now with the tape measure, before we get started, go ahead and measure the head of the person that this is going to be intended for. I'm making this for myself, so my head is 22 inches, and we're gonna be working with a negative ease with the headband. So I'll go over that a little bit more as we get working in with the project. To start off, we're going to begin by using the long tail cast on method, and we're gonna cast on 32 stitches. Now, if you wanna make this wider, you can by adding 18 stitches, because uh, that's what the stitch works in the multiples of. But for this purpose, we're going to do 32. For row one, we're beginning on the wrong side, and we're gonna be working a three stitch I-cord border on each side of the headband. So to begin with that, we are going to start by slipping one purlwise with the yarn in front. Then we're going to knit the next stitch, and then we're gonna slip the next one with the yarn in front. Now we're going to begin the pattern. So we're going to knit two, so one, two, then we're going to purl two. Purl one, purl two, then we're going to slip with the yarn in front two times. So one and two. Then we're going to purl two, purl one, purl two. Then we're going to knit two, so one, two. Then we're going to purl six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we're going to knit two. After we do that, we're going to purl two, purl one, purl two, then we're going to slip two with the yarn in front and always slip purl wise. Then we're going to purl two. One, two. Then we're going to knit two. And then slip one with the yarn in front, knit one and slip one with the yarn in front. And that's your row one. Now, it doesn't look like a whole much, a whole bunch just yet, but give it a few repeats and it'll start taking on the shape that you want it to have. 
So let's begin with row two. Row two is where we're going to be working on the right side, and we are also going to be needing our cable needle. So we will begin row two with the I cord edging, and that's going to be by knitting one. And then we're going to slip one with the yarn in front and knit one. Now, if you want, you can even put a stitch marker in there if you'd like to do that to just help keep your place. Since it's just three stitches, I'm not too worried about that. Um, but whatever works for you is what's going to be the right choice. So now to begin with the pattern, we're going to purl two. So purl one. Purl two. Then we're going to begin the cabling with a one, two, right cross. And what that means is that we're going to slip two stitches purl wise to a cable needle. We're going to put that at the back of our work. We'll knit one, then we'll knit two from the cable needle. So we're going to take two stitches purl wise. And I usually, if I know I'm going to work at the back of my work, I just put my needle up front. So I'm going to slip these two stitches. So one and two. I'm going to let that hang at the back of my work. Then I'm going to knit one. And some people are able to do the cables without a cable needle. I am not that brave. I always get a little too scared about losing them. Now we're going to either you can knit directly off the cable needle or you can place them back on the left hand needle. I prefer to place them back and I'm going to knit those two. So one whoops, and two. Then we're going to do a one, two left cross. So that means we're going to slip the next stitch purl wise onto the cable needle. And we're going to leave that at the front of our work. Then we're going to knit two off the left hand needle. And then we're going to knit that one off the cable needle or put it back on our left hand needle. And then we'll knit that stitch. And those are the two types of cables you'll be using in this pattern. Now, after you do that, we're going to purl two. So one, two. Then we are going to knit six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and purl two. One, purl two. Then we're going to do the cables one more time. So we're going to do the one, two, right cross. And that's where we're going to slip two stitches purl wise off the left hand needle and place it at the back of our work. So that's one. Whoops, don't do that. <laughs> And two. Now it's at the back of the work. So we will knit one off the left hand needle. Place those two stitches back onto the left hand needle. And knit those two. So one and two. Then we're going to do the one, two left cross. So we're going to slip one onto the cable needle purlwise, hold it at the front of our work, knit two. So one, two. Then we're going to place that stitch back on our left hand needle, put the cable needle away, and knit that one stitch. Then we're going to purl two, purl one, purl two. And then we're back to our I cord edging. So we're going to knit one, slip one with the yarn in front, and knit the last stitch. And here we go for your row two. For rows three through six, you'll repeat the two rows we just did 
two more times. So I'm going to go ahead and work those two times and then I'll meet you for row seven. So I've repeated rows one and two two more times and this is what your piece of work should be looking like. And you'll notice that you have these great little, almost like a fishtail braid that goes up those two sides where you've been working the cables. And now we're going to start working more of a stockinette on these guys. And this is going to start with the cables. So let's get started on row seven. Okay, for row seven, we are back on the wrong side of our work. And we are going to begin by slipping that first stitch with the yarn in front for that I-cord edge. And then we're going to knit one. Then we're going to slip the next one with the yarn in front. And then our I-cord is taken care of. Now we're going to knit two. So one, two, and then we're gonna purl six. So purl one, purl two, Row three, four, five, six. Then we're going to knit two. Now we're in that section where we're going to start where the cables are going to work. So we got to build that foundation. So we're going to purl two. And then we're going to slip two with the yarn in front. One two, and then we're going to purl two. Then knit two. After we knit those two, we're going to purl six. One, two, three, four, five, and six and knit two. And now we're already up to our I-cord edge. So we're going to slip one with the yarn in front, knit one, and slip one with yarn in front. And that is row seven. For row eight, we're back on to the right side of our work. So we're going to begin by knitting one, working that I-cord edge. And then with the yarn in front, we're going to slip one and then we're going to knit the next stitch. Now we're going to purl two. One, purl two, and then we're going to knit six. One, two, three, four, five, and six, then purl two. One, two. Now we're going to begin our cabling on this little section right here. So we are going to do the one, two, right cross, and then the one, two, left cross. So let's begin the right cross by taking those two stitches onto our cable needle, slipping them purlwise and holding them at the back of our work. Then we're going to knit one off the left hand needle, put those stitches back on the left hand needle, and then we're going to knit those two. So one, two. Then we're going to begin our left one, two left cross. So we're going to take that one stitch off the left hand needle to our cable needle, hold it at the front. And we're going to knit two. So one, two. Then we're going to put that stitch back on our left hand needle and knit one. Then we're going to purl two. Now knit six. One, two, three, four, five, six and purl two. And now we're to our I-cord edge where we are going to do the knit one, 
slip one with the yarn in front and knit that last stitch. And that's your row eight. So to do rows nine through 12, you're gonna repeat rows seven and eight two more times. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those and then I'll show you how it'll look after that repeat. So I've repeated rows seven through eight two more times and this is what I have so far. To continue in this pattern for the headband, just continue going until you reach two inches less than the size of the head that this headband is for. So for instance, when I measured my head and it was 22 inches, I'm gonna make mine to 20 inches. So that way it has a little bit of stretch to it and it actually stays on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do another repeat of rows one through 12 so you can see how it looks with a little bit more of the pattern. And I'll see you in just a moment. So this is what I have after repeating rows one through 12 one more time. And you can really see the pattern from the cabling really taking shape now. Now, when you do the continuation of these rows to continue with the headband, be sure to end on row five or 11. So that way, when you are done, you will bind off in pattern. Now I'm gonna make mine up to 20 inches, and then I will come back, show you how we do the bind off, how we do the sewing, and then we get to enjoy our headbands. So I've made my headband to where it's now 20 inches long, and now it's time to bind off. Now this part is going to get sewn in, so if you wanna do it knitwise, you totally can. But what I'm going to do is knitwise for the first three, and then purlwise for those two. Knitwise for the next six, purlwise for the next two. So I'm just gonna get started on that, and then we'll go over the sewing. So just knitwise. For these first three, so that's one, and then two, and then that first one counts as the third. But now I'm going to do this purl wise. Just one, and two. And I'm going to continue in that pattern. And then I'll come back to show you how to do the Z twist sewing. Um, but before I do that, and this is what I would suggest to you too, is I'm gonna go ahead and block my piece. So this is gonna get blocked so that it opens up a little bit more. And since I am working with 100% wool, I think it'll open up quite nicely. So I will see you after this is blocked. So after letting my headband block, it did open up quite a bit. And I was very careful when I blocked it to make sure that it didn't go over the 20 inches. But you see how nice and open these cables are. Now they have a lot more definition. So to begin with this, we're gonna need a tapestry needle. And I went ahead and traded it out for one that's a little bit sharper so that we can get through all of the ends. And then this is also when you're gonna need your scissors. So when you've finished your piece, you should have had long tails on each side because we're gonna use those to sew up the, uh, the headband. To start off, I'm gonna take my longest tail, and that's the one that I'm gonna go ahead and thread the yarn through my needle. So I'm gonna get that in there, and then I'm just gonna pull it through a bit, and I'm gonna set that aside. Now, when you fold this, you're gonna to wanna to have the right side facing up, and then you'll fold it together, just like so. Now, once you have it to where it's facing the right way, you're gonna do something just a little bit different. We're gonna create two I call them C's, where you're gonna fold one in half like so, and then the other side in half like so. And then you're gonna nest them into each other. So this bottom part goes underneath the top on the left side, and then this part will close in, this part will close in. Now when I do this, I leave a little bit of space on this side and a little bit of space on this side. So you just wanna line these up the best that you can so that you can get to the ends. So I'm just gonna even this out. So that way it should look like so. Now I'm going to take my needle 
And I'm going to simply just push it in right about here through all four layers. And then I'm just going to continue sewing down that side. And you won't have messed with this part just yet. So you just go through, making sure to go through all four. And now when we get to this section, I'm going to fold it down just a little bit so that way we close this area up and we're going to sew around it. Make sure to get it nice and snug. And then start working your way back down. So when you come to this part where you have this little guy left, go ahead and fold it in the opposite direction that you folded this one. And this just avoids big pointy gaps on the right side when you will fold this right side out. So just secure this guy. And I go through this a few times just to make sure everything is secure. When you feel that it's secure, go ahead and weave in your ends. I'll usually just put my needle through like so, just to secure that tail. And give it a snip. And now your other tail. You want to make sure that it goes through out to the side where you were working. So I'm going to see where that was. And then I'm just going to poke that through so that way it comes out to where I need to be working. All right. And now with this other tail, I just go through and do another pass just to make sure everything is nice and secure. And trim that end. And then when you turn it right side out, you have a twist. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And I will see you later with more tutorials. Have a great day. Happy knitting. Bye.